Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in the great Jared of Head PE. How are you doing today, man? Having a great day. I'm here in Eagle, Idaho. Um, and let's see, I think it's about, you know, 90 degrees, so I'm loving it. How, where, where are you um, broadcasting from? Nice work. Uh, Ghost Cult is international, but I'm in Brooklyn, uh, New York native. I lived in Boston for a while, too. And uh, yeah, it's, it's humid and hot here, of course. You know, first and foremost, I've been doing, I do tons of interviews. It's important for me to just do a check-in with everybody before we talk about music and rock and other things like I just I hope you're well I hope you know this has been a very hard year for a lot of people I hope your family's well the band is well it's it's been rough out there and I just like to do a check-in with everybody dude it's <laughs> you know every time there's something crazy going on with the world or you know with economics it, it seems like it has my my career as a musician as a rock guy who plays in the clubs all over the world has gone on touched and unscathed except for this time right so like this is the first time and the longest break that I've ever had in my 25 years you know because I signed my first record deal 1995 okay so that's like 25 years ago and been touring and making a living off of touring and you know of course songwriting and all that this whole time and now it's just the rug pulled for out from under you so but you know what my family's health my health is great and um we're just waiting to see if the world's gonna go back to normal or not i really hope so i'm really glad to hear that everybody's well um and yeah it is just a mind blow it's just like what but um <laughs> <laughs> i don't know there's not even enough memes for all this shit. but oh, at the no. same time i i think it you know yeah, it's weird because you work so hard. I know you're literally a road dog. You've been on the on the road all your career, every yeah. year. Even if you didn't have something to promote, you went out and toured. So I know it's hard, and it's got to be strange to be. I'm glad you put this record out, class of 2020. Now, a lot some people had to delay. I'm glad you didn't. I'm glad there's music to talk about and to keep us occupied and stimulate our brains. You know. I'll tell you what. When the um when the when the concert implode the concert when the tour imploded we were in rhode island uh because i was picturing the last show in rhode island you know and then um we had all you know we were out there on like a seven week tour and it was only week two you know and um so then when we were forced to come home as soon as i got home where normally i feel like on such a you know unsure uh reality I, I my creative juices wouldn't be flowing but this time when i got home i just immediately because i do have a studio upstairs i just immediately started going up there and pulling tracks together like i was on a mission and um you know for me being the 20th anniversary of our my like biggest record broke um you know, I made lemonade out of the lemons of the situation and got the record done and, and got it out. Nice, man. I appreciate that. I think the fans appreciate that. And you did just have a record, a banging record, just right before this. So nice that you're on a creative high, despite the world being upside down. Good for you. Um, not everybody can just get creative and feel inspired and turn it on. Some people like... I had plans for this whole year and none of these are working out. I'm going to just play games. I'm going to play Xbox and not do shit. <laughs> you know? So I like that you're industrious and says, I mean, it sounds like your whole career. You've, that's been you all the time, just never in a pandemic, you know? Well, yeah, you know, I was thinking about that too, but that's what's kept this career going is me just always just, you know, uh, pushing forward and uh, wearing every hat possible, no matter what it takes to just kind of keep a career in rock and roll going, you know, um, selfishly, because, you know, playing in all the clubs all over the world, I could think of worse jobs that make less money. So, you know, I've been motivated to do it. It's not, you know, I think people use the word sacrifice too much. Like I've sacrificed a lot, you know, you hear a lot of UFC fighters using that word. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think that word's appropriate when you're doing something you love, you know, <laughs> you know, but, um, wow. What a crazy time we're in though, brother. Jeez. But, uh, we're going to make it through. Yeah, we're resilient. Um, I, you know, I don't know about you. I, you know, there's a lot of talk. New York has been hit very hard. We were the epicenter of this thing at one point. We may yet be again because people are dicks. 
and they won't mask up all the time. Huh. You know, people in New York is dead and people are running away. And I'm sure you've had, you know, where you're from and where you've spent time, you know, there's all kinds of, you know, big city living problems for everybody. Everybody's living for the city, as Stevie used to say, right? I'm just trying to live for the yeah. city. But like, the city's not always living for us and uh, natives <laughs> and uh, the working class and the poor. But, um, you know, on the flip side, we are very resilient people. Americans are very resilient people. I, I do believe, not to be jingoistic, I do believe we're going to bounce back. When Imagine that first club tour when we can all come back safely. It's going to be banana balls like crazy. Yeah. Crazy yeah. Good. <laughs> I keep dreaming about that, my friend. You know, there's actually a song, NL4, it's just a song about dream. Am I ever going to be rocking in a club again? You know, 12 people. 24 people i don't care you know what i'm saying just rocking in a club i'll kiss every stage from here to poughkeepsie <laughs> you have i've seen you in poughkeepsie <laughs> have a chance. Uh, and and that was actually an amazing segue to my next thing which is you're a guy you always have an incredible stage persona you are always in with the crowd i've seen you on a big stage i've seen you on a little stage 20 something years i've been following you and, uh, and I used to play in bands, so I know exactly how it is. Like, you want to be up close to people. You want them to grab the mic. You want to have, like, the pylon. You want to have people rap in your face with you. And I, I imagine it has to be a little scary until I don't know how you feel about that, the vaccine, if there's going to be a vaccine, or when will you feel safe to do a tour, is my question. Well, you know, I'm one of these crazies that kind of defers to the scientists and doctors on such matters. <laughs> I'm like a lunatic like that. But, um... You know, I'm a Mr. Conspiracy guy too, right? I love a good conspiracy. But you know, um, when it comes to this, like the flu on steroids thing, um, to me, as I'm just observing what's going on, it seems like it's mutating and um, it seems like the uh, fatality rates are decreasing. Um, don't quote me on any of this. What I'm getting at is, is, is just that, you know, I do feel that like we're not always going to be living in this like, you know, um, post COVID uh, reality where, you know, we can't, uh, you know, share a smoke or a drink or, or whatever. I even, you know what I mean? I don't know how long it'll take, but uh, three years, five years in the future, I, I think things are going to go back to normal. I'm sure eventually you will. Uh, it's funny that you brought that up because my friends and I were talking about like, not to get like all droll, but we were talking about like Planet Fitness, right? Has like pizza day for the, for the you know, that's their like demographic, right? It's like, if you don't like to go to the gym and you're not a jock, come to Planet Fitness. Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge Planet Fitness guy because on tour, there's one right down the street from every club. Not to mention massage chair, free shower, etc. So <laughs> yes, thank you. we were like, can you do free pizza day and like very soon after the pandemic? No, because you don't know, you know, not to mention I'm sure people are getting off like a machine they just sweated on and putting their hand in a pizza box. Not to be crazy and go off the rails on this, but like, yeah, we started to like snowball. I was like, all right, all right, I gotta stop, yo. <laughs> <laughs> my, anxi my anxiety is not good for this. I, I do want to hit the gym again when it opens, but yeah. Right. Dude, it's funny you say that because I'm a big fitness guy, but the gym sounds gross to me right now, uh, even minus the pizza day, you know. Uh, but, you know, here's interesting. I was living in that bubble when, when the tour, because like we were talking about, I go to Planet Fitness to start my day when I'm on tour because, you know, work out, shower, get to the club. Um, but, you know, uh, and I was still going when this thing was kind of simmering, you know, before the, it, the shit really hit the fan. But it was interesting because, you know, you're on tour with all the fellas and you're not really taking it serious. But then when I got home, my wife quickly snapped me into it. Like, wash your hands, wash your hands. You know, she was like all about it. But, you know, now, Jesus, it's like six months later. And what a trip, you know. But um, that it's interesting you bring up the, the Planet Fitness and the pizza day. Because, you know, even when things get normal, we're still going to have this residual like, or, or will we? You know how, how quick that this society like loves to forget shit, you know? Oh, wait, I don't hear you. Did I, yeah. did I do something I'm, wrong? I'm good. 
I'm okay. there you are. I, I'm in Brooklyn, so sirens. I muted myself. Okay, no worries. Everybody, oh, it's the trademark of all my interviews and videos is like there's a siren going on or a, <laughs> you know what's up. It's Brooklyn, baby. You know what's up. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like absolutely, man. Like yeah, we also forget shit and we forget like we all. Every generation thinks they had it the hardest. You know, my dad was like, I walked two both ways to school uphill with one shoe in the snow. And you don't know what it's like. You're a whiny little bitch and you don't know what it's like to be tough. And I was like. Maybe, I don't know, I had Kiss Dolls and G.I. Joes, I don't know, and I had like, you know, Black Sabbath and Run DMC, so I don't know what it's like to have only Frank Sinatra and, you know, Dizzy Gillespie <laughs> and, be, and be impoverished, but like, thanks, Dad. So, you know, relatability, <laughs> relatability. Yeah, man, I do, I do feel like uh, it is going to come back, we're going to be okay, and, uh, and uh, guys like you are going to keep thriving, because you hustled this whole time. And, I, and listen, if anybody needed for self-care or whatever, yo, I'm burned out. And this opportunity to just bro down with my family and do nothing and take a break. Because, you know, as a DIY, you've been on big labels, you've been on small labels, you've been on your own label. DIY artist, you never really stop working. It's never really all off. So just like a DIY business owner myself. So like I understand fully. And, um, yeah, you know, anybody who took time off during this time, no judgments, cool on you. Do you, boo. And uh, for you, I applaud you because, again, not everybody can just turn on the, fa the faucet and get right back in and be like, you know what? Lemonade, let's go. Let's make some lemonade. I like that. I like the PMA, bro, always. Well, thank you, brother. And you, the P I got that PMA. But I'll I tell you, you I, I do relate, I do relate uh, on the other side, too, you know, with people who, who get depressed and, and just can't, you know, are on the couch and can't get up there to get productive, you know, because I know I've been there before, too. Uh, but I'm highly motivated now. Um, but you, you, you uh, pointed at something that I wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah. You know, when you're home, like taking this longest break that I've, that I've ever had. And you know what? My son, who's about to turn 13 and grew up on the road and all that, you know, even when you're doing something you love, you can get caught up in the rat race. You know, I love jamming. I love rocking. Um, but you know what? I, because, you know, the, the shows aren't as packed as they were once were. So the payoffs aren't as big as they once were. So I got to do more shows and stay on the road more, you know. Um, and so uh, I'll tell you what, again, with the lemonade out of lemons is just to be home and take a breath after 20 years. <laughs> you know, it's been pretty sweet. Build a skate ramp for my boy, you know, but... I'll be ready for this to end as well, but it's been nice to take a breath. Awesome, man. Awesome. And in the meantime, we have this class of 2020 record, uh, you know, it's new stuff, throwback feels, all kinds of stuff. Here's where I want to start talking about class of 2020. My favorite lyric on the record, always, you always got bars. My favorite lyric on the record is we have to take care of the old and protect the weak. Right? It's like yeah. I'm paraphrasing. Sorry if I'm not That's exactly from that song, right. Nothing Lasts Forever, I was talking exactly. about. Exactly. And so that shit hit me because, like, I see a lot. And no matter what you believe in, no matter what your politics, no matter what your story is, like, you judge a society based on how you take care of its weakest people. Who needs the most help, right? And that's I love that's it. something I say all, all the time, bro. I'm aware. So I know you've like literally been the, one of the messages of the band forever. It's like, look out for your common, you know, fellow or fellow yeah. and, you know, ladies and everybody, all of us together. We're really all in this together, regardless of all our divisions. So I like that there's a lot of this, a message of unity throughout that song and the record. Definitely, bro. And you know what? Just as a point of like, you know, um, efficiency of a society, it would behoove a, a, an efficient society to take care of the weakest because it just comes back around to haunt you in some other way, uh, you know? But I think that there's such a, a short-sightedness of the average citizen that there are, you know, they, they only, you know, think that they don't, you know, I don't want to live in a socialist society, so I don't want to help people out. Well, if you don't help them out, it's going to cost you more in the end. I don't know. But that's my opinion. I mean, I, I put it that way. But then, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve, too, because I, I care about the fellow man. We're already getting taxed. There's a <laughs> there's our, there, I know there's money to help people <laughs> out there somewhere. So <laughs> Yeah, they haven't done the best job. It's kind of sad that these guys are on vacation while a lot of Americans are suffering. It's really shitty. And uh, shitty of them, they shouldn't have been allowed to like, you know, they're, they're public servants, their job is literally to 
work and resolve things. So it sucks. But also not a surprise because my whole life has been like, you know, Reagan, I thought Reagan was the worst president ever. Then I thought W was the worst president ever. It doesn't matter who's the worst president ever. The, the shit has to change. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter you know what else is just a bit disheartening, but uh, um, mo- part of it too is that like, I like to like be like, well, they're doing this, they're doing that, but you know what? It's, it's that we can't agree with our neighbors even on how to run the society, as you can see, right? Like half of the people want it this way and you know, half of the people don't want to share their peanut butter and jelly and half of the people are like, oh, I'll share my peanut butter and jelly, you know, and, and we can't agree on that. So um, it's like you said, it doesn't matter who's the worst ever because we can't agree on some fundamental, sh- fundamental shit of how to run our society. You know? Right on, right on. Sorry, again. <laughs> As you see, right on, right on point. So it's cool. I hope, I hope someone's okay. But um, maybe they're not just trying to beat the traffic and they're trying to help somebody. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, no, okay. no. Okay. No, I'm saying, no they're, I'm saying the leaders are kind of a reflection of, of us, right? Yeah, they're supposed yeah. to be. They're supposed to be. We need term limits. I think that would almost be the best thing, term limits, because like some of these guys have been in there for 50 years. Yeah. and we need some shit. turnover. A uh, lot. Yeah, the future of this company country is not old white ass wrinkly white dudes it's not with the same beliefs for however many years so yeah man uh but yeah always appreciate uh the positivity and then again the talent i love the songs a lot of fire bars dropping a lot of bars all these years later dropping like watch it burn different different rhyming styles different voices with your rhymes in the same song in the same kind of like verse and pre-chorus like still creative. I love that shit, man. Cause like a lot of people just kind of nail it in and they're not still trying to improve and <laughs> size. like, Oh, I got this thing. This is my style. Everybody likes this. I'm just going to do that shit to death. And you are you know, 20 years, 25 years of doing this and you're still like evolving. It's cool, man. Well, you know what here, there's two points to make off of that. One is like, that is uh, like hip hop is like an ad as an, is a creature that's constantly evolving. Like, for a while, like I'll just be listening to to reggae or rock, and then not listen to hip hop. And then, and when I checked back in, I was like, "Whoa!" Noticing how the rhyme style had had evolved. But anyway, um, so that's interesting to keep in touch with that and be a student of that and be into the culture enough to kind of emulate the the evolution of that style, you know. But as far as the like constantly growing and evolving, like there's certain bands that I won't mention because I don't know how they'll take this, but who, you know, when they came out and then make a real killing off of a certain sound, stick with that sound, right? And so every record has that sound. I can't say that maybe if I would have made a bigger killing, maybe I would have done that, you know, stick to that, to that fucking recipe that made me a a few million dollars, you know, but um, since I never had that, I just, you know, not that I, you know, it's just something that I just enjoy. Whatever I'm into at the time makes its way onto the record, you know? So since broke, you know, I had my times where I was like, really like, um, analyzing the clash and fucking minor threat and all this. And you know what? The band evolved into getting more straight ahead punk sometimes than it, than it wasn't before in the major label days, you know? So, and then, you know, like you just mentioned that one style. So that's me like doing like dance hall voices and hip hop voices. Cause that's the shit I'm into. It's kind of like, you know, like schizophrenic cause it's, it's a blessing and a curse, you know? Cause I'm going all over the place and some people like it and a lot of managers hate it, but whatever. I've made it this far. So, right. you know, whatever. Managers are good at managing your business, but they're also not artists. So usually, usually they don't relate. So like I was going to say, you never did another broke, an album that sounds just like that. You never did a second bartender. You can't. I mean, that's right. Tra- tra- I know dudes that are not listening to that kind of music anymore. They're like, yo, I still fucks with bartender. I was like, word? I told, I was like, yo, I'm going to interview at PE. He's like, really do? I still fucks with bartender. I was like, you listen to like death metal and shit and do metal now and nothing remotely like that era of music, but he loves that track and he loves the band. So I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> that's, cool. that's, that's forever. You know, that's forever. So, but you never repeated yourself. And I think this record is, you know, the last record was fresh and this record has got equal shit on it. And it's really good. Um, You know, I I really like Last Call, Death Awaits, Greedy Girl, 
we the people it's like hit like right there man i love this stuff it's like wow really really strong and doesn't sound like a band that's got any you know like there's no quitting obviously you this is it this is what you're doing for life you know like well, when I, I was up there doing some of these vocals i was like i had to dig deep i was like oh, I could that you know because you're not at a show to dig deep to get that hardcore feeling especially on track three where i'm using that is like whoa it's yeah, yeah. a lot out of me but um yeah, bro, I had a good time. Uh, you know, I'm my worst critic, but on this record, I really had a good time with it. And you can hear that. You can hear that I'm having a good time. Regard, even if it's got a serious topic, if the track is bumping and it's a lot of fun, right. the fans will know. Listeners yeah. will not. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, like you said at the top, you know, 20 years of, of uh, broke and never, and I said never repeated it. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting to, to see how the whole business has evolved. And you actually started in the era when CDs still sold a lot for a while. That's bro. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell the, I have a lot of stories, but technology wise, you know, uh, it was uh, recording on tape, you know, uh, two big tape machines. And, you know, I don't know if people know who don't record, but nowadays you, they don't use tape. It's just all digital. Uh, you know, so when we, and you know, we did all that recording cause we were, I was signed to the New York uh, record label Jive. Uh, Broke was recorded in Jersey with Machine and mixed in New York. So when we had to, uh, okay, so then Broke was actually recorded digital, but the guy who mixed it insisted that we put it on tape. It took so much tape to, that they had to use a, a, a box, like a U-Haul box truck to transport the tapes for Broke. Then, you know, then a few years later, I was like, oh, now I can put my record in my backpack, you know, because external drives were like this big. Now, dude, well, then it was a flash drive. Now it's like my record just exists like online, like, oh, send it here, send it here. You know what I mean? Like you get it all together, but it's just, it exists online, you know? I don't know, dude. Technology, I've, I've watched it evolve in a crazy way. Yeah, I hope you're still, I hope the label paid for that guy and all the tape <laughs> not, and not you guys. Well, yeah, but that's what they do. They, they pay for it, but then you got to recoup it. It's weird. I, I, uh, I don't want to go down, again, so many things to unpack. I had a debate recently uh, with somebody about like, my problem is not with streaming. I love streaming. I love, I use Spotify a lot, actually, just myself. But also like, A, I want the artist to get paid no matter what the platform and paid correctly. And then B, I think, I think it's a blessing and a curse. Like you said, the availability of music is amazing. Anything is possible. People really love singles now. They, but maybe they don't listen to whole albums anymore. But also, mm -hmm. like, there's like the movie industry. You see a trailer, and then you don't get the movie for free the day it comes out. You still gotta pay to go get it. You know, even now you have to pay to go see Bill and Ted today for like twenty five bucks to get to keep it, or twenty to rent it for the weekend. You're not, you don't, you know, like you're still paying them a lot of money. And it's not like the music industry kind of got it wrong, right? You, the whole album streams. It's free to listen to anywhere. And if you really love the band or you really want to have the vinyl or something or the shirt bundle, you buy it. Yeah, you love I, the band, yeah, you buy I know it. it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like sour grapes coming for me, but geez, it, it's gnarly, dude. It's just gnarly. Uh, especially, it's, especially for bands at my level. You know, if you're like uh, Lama God, Cardi B, or, or, or whoever, oh, you're already, you're, you're loving it. You're going to make fucking tons of money off of streams. But if you're, a, if you're a guy like me, you wish that someone had to pay for every time they played your shit or, or had to buy it or some shit. <laughs> right on, right on. Well, hopefully, you know, sports will come back. Sports ball seems to love you guys. I've heard some of your songs in you know, football games and stuff. So hopefully you get a dollar for that or whatever they give uh, yeah, for rights, mechanical rights. But uh, on, a, on a positive tip, to just as we wind this down, I want to give you back your day. I always like to ask artists, like, what was that initial thing that sparked in you that made you want to rap or sing or pick up a microphone? Was it a band? Mm -hmm. Was it? Did you see a concert? Did you hear a song and be like, that's what I'm supposed to do with life? The first thing that comes to mind is um, seeing Rush on mushrooms in like 1979 or something moving pictures uh on that tour so that's when i was like oh 
I think I'd like, to, I don't know. That's, that would be the moment. You know, I grew up playing the piano uh, at eight years old and singing in the choir at church, um, a very stuffy church, not like a soulful gospel church, a very stuffy church. And then, but that never, that was not rock and roll, but yeah. So the rush would have done it because after that, then I tried out for a band and sang like a journey song, like lights go out in the city, the ocean song by Led Zeppelin. And um, then like a, a rush song. Yeah. So that was it for me. You know, my first band was like 1980, 82 or something like that. Yeah. Like pre MTV or any of that. That's amazing. You just name dropped like one of my favorite Zep songs and Moving Pictures is the best Rush album for sure. Um, so even if you couldn't appreciate it because you were like affected, probably if they were good shrooms. But uh, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Oh, dude. Yeah, it was gnarly. That's awesome, man. I love I love I just find that always that story changes for every artist. And I love I, I never get disappointed by the, by the answer. Well, thank you. I try. Yeah. Like I said, that's my that's what I'm interested in your story and hearing what made you be you. Um, yeah, man. So congrats on this record and, uh, keep your, keep your PMA. I know you will. Hopefully Thank we'll get it, all, we'll get it all back. Next one of these we do, we'll do in person, I hope in Brooklyn or somewhere else in the country. Dude, the I love Brooklyn. I love Boston too. I'm a huge, I'm just a huge fan of that Northeast culture, dude. It's not right bad. It's, it's especially in the fall when the leaves turn. It's fun. Thanks for your time. Appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Best, best of luck. Have a good Thank day, you. brother. Thank you.